chapter 10 and verse 47. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. <laughs> well, we want to continue with the night series when men cry, when men cry, it's a difference. And today we want to, or tonight we want to minister from the sermon topic, a blind city, a blind city. Hmm. One of the amazing aspects of the Bible is how it is about a particular account that we read. And yet, upon careful and precise examination, it is about more than what we initially think it's about. There are layers. Lord have mercy. You know, there's a layer of cake I like. I haven't had it for a while. Cabbage farm. I like the one with the vanilla and the, the chocolate between. Okay, hallelujah. Now, I, I must confess, um, most times I just walk past it, you know, and have a flashback, say, whoo. But just the anointing fell over me, so I will be purchasing one this week, I am sure. <laughs> there is something about layers. You know, I like, can I go back to the cake? It just hit my spirit. I like taking the spoon or the fork and going, there's an anointing as you go from layer one, two, and three. Well, church, that's what reading the Bible, God's word, is like to me. It, it, there's a softness, sweetness. It's, it's not too, too strong. It's just smooth, man, just smooth. You know, I, I prefer the lighter chocolate. Smooth, smooth, yeah. And, and so to me, as I read and I study God's word, that's the deliciousness that it is. It's not merely a two-dimensional story, the Bible, the Bible account. It is at least a three-dimensional story. It is deeper and wider and has more breadth <laughs> than one could ever imagine. You know, perhaps that's why, I believe it was the psalmist that said, oh, taste and, my Lord, oh, taste and see. You're tasting it, but you're seeing it. You're tasting the word of God and experiencing it at a level that you were not expecting. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, tonight's text is one such example for it is about a blind man and his healing, and yet it is more about more than a blind man. It is about a blind city, <laughs> a blind city, and it is about a blind generation in the year 2019. Now, blindness is no joke. It's no casual thing, for a blind person may feel the light, 
but they cannot see the light or see the beauty of images that cast their colors because of light. The word of God is full of light and is about light, while the works of the devil are about blindness and darkness. Mm. It is no small thing that the first creative word of God was to bring about light. Mm. Genesis 1, 1 through 3, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. <laughs> and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. You know, light has a dismissive power. To me, light, light is like you got some nerve existing, darkness. You think you're strong, darkness? Until I show up. That's why we're lights of the world. That's why you cannot help but cause a some type of commotion if you really shine forth. Light ought never to compromise with darkness. Before anything was made, God established the presence of light. I'll say this again. Before anything was made, let me help you out. Before government made a decision. Before the people made a decision, light was established. This tells me that before the enemy can destroy a thing, he must darken the thing. Hmm? Hmm? The devil must saturate the environment with darkness, thus coming directly against the mind of God. That's why depression is a serious thing. Depression is darkness. Depression is a result of emotional instances circumstances with a temporary relief of darkness and then the darkness wants to continue to stay. Now listen to me. From creation, light decimated. That means it destroyed it, you all. Keisha. That means that anything, hear me now, anything that you are going through, I didn't say how much time it's going to take. But I promise you this, that as you apply the light to your dark situation, the dark situation is destroyed. I don't know how fast it's destroyed, but I promise you once the light shows up, the darkness has no authority. Light and darkness never agree. Light and darkness will never debate. <laughs> and then compromise with each other. No. One will take preeminence. Now, since Jesus is the light of the world, to come against his teaching is to destroy that which he is. So if you come against Jesus, you come against light, which means you embrace darkness. So as Bermuda gets darker and darker, could it be that it's because we've rejected Jesus Christ, the light of the world? John 8 and 12 it reads, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Did you hear that? Yeah. The light of life. John 1, 5. And the light shineth in darkness. What? You got it. And the darkness comprehended it not. <laughs> How are you trying to make dark understand light? Hmm? Ephesians 5 and 8, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. John 3 and 19, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. 1 Peter 3 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And then I have 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5. It says, 
Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. So don't tell me y'all got to do something in the dark. Since you tell me y'all got to do it in the dark. <laughs> okay, so I don't know you're doing it in the dark. Soon as you know you're doing it in the dark. But I, I'm not all seeing I. I'm going to tell you. Children of light walk in the light. And their deeds can be exposed because their deeds were done in the light anyway. And their deeds are a reflection of him who is the light of the world. Hmm. Well, journey with me tonight uh, as we understand this text a bit, bit more as we look at the following three points. Point number one, pervasive blindness. Pervasive blindness. Point number two, personal blindness. Personal blindness. And then point number three, physical blindness. Physical blindness. So let's begin. Point number one. Pervasive blindness. In the text, we are dealing with an obviously blind man named Bartimaeus. The entire chapter shared with us a number of interesting accounts, the whole chapter. And then we zoom on in to conclude the chapter on this blind man. 52 verses. Six of the verses. The last six. Well, I mean, it might be seven, 40. 46, 47, 48, 49, 51, 52. Seven verses. Seven verses about the blind man. So we got to understand how, how did we journey down to verse 46 to start talking about the blind man. As I read the chapter, I realized that Jesus was teaching about more than a blind man. Jesus was showing us a blind place, a blind city. Worse than one man blind is a city full of blindness. My, 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 my. Now, Jesus, Jesus is in the city of Judea. <laughs> From verses 1 to 31. He's in Judea. <laughs> Here Jesus lets us see people are blind. You got to get it. The whole city. People are blind. In verses 2 through 12, the city people were blind to Jesus, his, his thoughts concerning divorce. They wanted to see it another way. And they wanted Jesus, watch this now, to line up with how Moses handled the topic. <laughs> now, I know I got divorced people in here, that I, so I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the ideal situation. Because I know you would tell me I didn't get married to get divorced. Who goes in front of a priest? Who spends that type of money? Who goes to no, we don't do that. So we're talking about the ideal situation. See, if I start feeling sorry for people, my family, your family, we ain't going to preach on such things. But I got to let you know the ideal of what Jesus was trying to teach the people. He was trying to tell them, I, don't, I, I hate divorce. This is, this is me and my church. I, I'm no divorce. And they were like, no, no, but Moses permitted. Blind, blind. Now, now in verses 13 through 16, <laughs> the disciples, not the disciples, see me? Not the disciples. The holy man of God who were walking along with Jesus. No, hold on. How could they be walking with the light? And not receive the light. See, when, when, see, see, even understands that, you know. That's why when people walk with the pastor and then they don't walk, hey, who are you? Me and me. That's why I say to myself. Uh. In verses 13 to 16, the disciples were blind <laughs> to the, oh, look at that, to the importance of the most vulnerable amongst us, the children. Past the travels. I didn't buy myself a purse. Not one purse. Shh, shh. What we call them? Shoes? Nothing. I know, Martha, you wouldn't understand it, but I didn't. All I bought myself was T-shirts. Yeah. But I made sure. We went to a store, and they had, oh, they had guitar. My favorite. Look, I wish I could play the guitar. 
You should see this store, lined up with guitars, and they're so pretty. I saw a metallic blue one. I said, man, I bet I get that one. Anyway, point being is, I went in, I asked about the tambourines. They didn't have the tambourines. Now, this is Ron, what, Vanesty? Vanesty. Oh, my gosh, I want these tambourines for the children. Oh, we want to thank God for Amazon.com. Oh, yes. God, we thank you for Amazon.com. I know government of, of America is having an issue with them and the, 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 the Senate and the House, but your little servant Maria wants to thank you for Amazon.com. I was in the car. I said, go ahead, look at it. She has internet on her phone there. Hi. Tambourine bought a saddle for her. Ain't nothing more like $12. Thank you, Amazon.com. $1.99, delivered in two days. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It was there by the Friday, Friday morning. Why is pastor saying that? Because one of the key statements that, that Jesus, Jesus said, if you're not blind, watch this now. If you are not blind in the house, you recognize the importance of children. I know they can be a nuisance. I know they can be loud. I know they can be off key. I know all that. But guess what? Jesus said, uh, suffer them not. Forbid them. Tell them come to me. Now, if Jesus can take the children and rest them on his knees and, and cater to them, how can we can we can't just appreciate what they're trying to let them learn music? What's that in something up? Another 10 years, you'll be like, her pastor was a prophet, because look, look who's on the keyboard. Look who's on the drums. It starts right here. I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to tell you. The disciples, the holy men of God, those in residence with Jesus, trying to shoo the children off. I'm talking about, let me help you, because we've got to grow up. I'm talking to you about blindness that Jesus is showing us because all we know is blind Bartimaeus. That's our main focus. But the whole chapter embraces the physiology of blindness in a spiritual way. Okay, what else? What else? Verses 17, because like I said, Bartimaeus doesn't start to 46. Verses 17 through 22, <laughs> there was a young man who, who was so blinded by his own wealth <laughs> that he could not see that real wealth was being a disciple of Jesus. Hmm? I'm so glad for the growth. Thank you. You see, because when you're a net Christian, it means you don't trust them entirely. But a gross Christian says, God, I'm going to try you at your word. And we grow up. We all grow up. We all understand that this is where we graduate to. So here you have a young man said that he had done everything right since his youth. He kept the Ten Commandments. He kept all the laws. He, was, he had a spotless life. But that old money, money was a God. You know, I've been pastoring long enough. Now I've got some testimonies where if I tell them, you won't have a clue who I'm talking about. <laughs> some people say, pastor, this is all I want. You know, it could be a job. Usually it's a job. Then I'm going to be in church. God gives him the particular job or whatnot. You didn't see him. You didn't see him. I ain't talking about missing two out of the four Sundays. I'm talking about you don't see them. Pastor, the only reason I can't make it is because I have to work on a Sunday. God then arrange where you don't have to work on any Sunday. We don't see you. See, it, it, it's not the outer. Oh, that mercy. It's not the outer blindness. They're going to make you fall in a ditch. It's the inner spiritual darkness that's going to mess you up. That's what happened with this rich young fella. Then verses 23 through 27, the disciples, here we go again, were blind in understanding that a relationship with God had the power to free a person who was actually in bondage to money. That's where you heard Sister Jacobs where they mentioned um. Oh, it's hard for a rich man to make, a, make it in. 
easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Hmm? All God is trying to do through this teaching, showing us Jesus, is increase your faith. That this, you got to hear disciples walking with Jesus, eating meals with Jesus. And if Jesus snored, they knew how he snored. But they missed the vital faith message of understanding Jesus is more than a prophet. They admired the teacher, superintendent. But they didn't understand you're more than a teacher. The moment that you can take the word of God and, and, and break it down and carve it out, oh, you're more than a teacher. That's, that's an anointing right there. All right. Verses 28 through 31. The disciples were blind to understanding that you cannot give up all to follow Jesus and have less. No, with Jesus, you will always have more. You know, they're like, Jesus is trying to tell them, you got to give up brethren, um, house, brethren, mama, daddy, children, and they think they're going to have less. That tells me, that should tell you that they missed it, that Jesus is the one that gave it to them in the first place. And whatever God will allow to be removed from your life is because he already just down the road a little bit has something that will fill that, fill that space. He will never because you've got to remember the seed, Deacon Trap, you've got to remember the seed so in principle. That when God, when God listen, I, I, I see it now, you know, I see it. When God removes from your life, yeah. it's like, let me tell you what I see so you can see what I see. I see um, a tree, and you're digging around it because it's going to be transplanted. That's one thing. Or I see, because I see the image, but I'm hearing it in two ways. Same tree, you're digging around it because you're making more room for growth. That's my point. That's my point. That sometimes there's a digging in our lives. Sometimes it seems like things are being removed from our lives. But if we will only understand that God has bigger, it, it can only, the tree can only get bigger if there, there's a removal of some unnecessary things that are there in the first place. And the removal is never, we, we did this property, we were cleaning it. I'm acting like I did a whole lot. We were cleaning it. And boy, to get those palm trees, get those roots up, you had to go away it's from where the main core bark was. And the only reason that it's so open now is because you've gotten rid of some things. Now you can see the beauty. Now you can see the possibilities. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You come on Sunday, you see possibilities. And so they're missing it. That Jesus would not take away from you without giving you something in return. All right. Then Jesus next, because that was in Judea. Jesus now is in the city of Jerusalem. He's in Jerusalem. First, he is in Judea. <laughs> 31 verses. 31 verses sharing all types of people in the city. Then he moves on to Jerusalem. City, another city, Jerusalem. From verses 32 through 45. Now, it is in these verses that we realize that the disciples were carnal. <laughs> people in the world look at any churches and church full of hypocrites. Jesus knew that. <laughs> Jesus knew. Listen. Let's let's look at the right context of the word hypocrite. Masking. There are people who are masking to be one thing while they're another. But let me tell you something. The best place for a hypocrite to come is church. Eventually, the Spirit of God is going to reveal the truth. 
Ain't no sense going to the doctor if you're feeling good. You'd rather pay a visit. Well, let me tell you a story. I, had a, I went, I said, you know, people advised me, you, you got all this insurance pass to go get, go get. I go, you know me, I'm just a nonsense. Yeah, hey, you got an appointment. Yeah, I'll take your blood test. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Then one day, this is another time, I had to go see the doctor. But this little, my singing voice wasn't being as distinct as it should. I said, it's rare for me to have a flu or something like that. You know, these things that hang around. So I go in and see the doctor. You know I'm saying nurse, retired nurse here. And um, you know, you wait in the office for a bit, you know, you pay before. Ain't that something to pay before? Mm. Yeah. And um, you know, I figure, you know, you, you need in order to make back that pay. You should spend about a half an hour at least. You all don't think like that? I do. I'm paying you umpteen amount per hour, but I need to spend some time with you. So I go in to the doctor, nice doctor, and I figure, you know, I'm at this thing. I haven't been able to get rid of it. This is going to be a long conversation. I'm going to ask some biology questions. You know, I'm going to mess with them. So he said, how you doing? I said, I'm good, cool, but I've got this, like, this throat, something like that, like I'm swallowing that, you know. So takes his lightning, you know, looked in the air, looked in the mouth. And let me tell you something. It took all of seven seconds. Seven seconds. I got it. I got you. You got the nasal drip thing. I'm like, oh, man, I forgot that inheritance. That's my family's fault. I forgot that. So I'm trying to figure out what, what, what's this? You got the drip, drip, a lot of it going in your lungs. I said, okay, just give me something. I, I plan all doctor's appointments. Let me help you out Monday or Tuesday. So I say, I'm going to preach Sunday, so get it together. That's my rules. Coming to you Monday or Tuesday, because whatever you give me, I got to be in shape. I got to be on the pulpit. Got to be in preaching. Got you done. So if that took seven seconds, I mean seven seconds. That means I'll be good, right? No, because then he starts asking me biblical questions. <laughs> Being the child of God, I am. A mighty woman preacher, I am. We spend the next 15 minutes talking about the Bible and his experience, whatever, whatever. Well, you know I want to say you owe me money, but I, I didn't say I didn't. Now, how did I get to that? I don't know how I got there. <laughs> We're talking about Jesus in Jerusalem. <laughs> It'll come to me. Hanging, I think it's the question thing. Hanging around Jesus, they have no clue who they're hanging around. Wasting time. That's probably why I talked about it. It will be why I talked about it. <laughs> so in Jerusalem now, 32 through to 45, this is where we realize the disciples are carnal. Oh, that's right. Carnal. Disciples are carnal. Christians can be lustful. Christians can be all, mm-hmm. Because until the, hear me now, until the disciples realized that Jesus was more than a teacher, they were calm or concerning him. Ran until after he resurrected and ascended into heaven, came and appeared unto him and all, all that, that they, watch this, they moved from being disciples to being apostles. There's another level of thinking. Once you understand truly who Jesus is, you can't go back to living a carnal life. You can't go back to living a, 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 a life that, that pleases your flesh because, no, you've now been in touch with the light of the world, the glory of the world. He's a keeper. Mm -hmm. So let's look at it. They did not know these verses. They did not truly understand 
the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> Jesus is speaking of his death and resurrection, and we have two disciples speaking about their position in the kingdom. Amen. United brothers, sons of Zebedee. Now, let me say it again. Jesus saying, I'm about to die. I'm about to receive. My flesh is about to be broken up. I, I'm about to be killed for a cause. I'm going to resurrect them. They say, listen. Probably did that. You used to do that in cartoons. Remember? They probably looked around. No other disciples. Hey, G, J, G. Listen, man, when you come into your kingdom, hook the brothers up. When you come into your kingdom, grant that we may sit on your right side. Isaiah, Jesus is talking about, right, see, see, you got to get there. Jesus is talking about killing himself, but they are so under the grip of the Roman authority, the government, that when Jesus talks about his kingdom, they're thinking about the earthly kingdom. Jesus talking about dying and going to his father. They're thinking about the kingdom. Oh, you're going to get your kingdom now? Okay, good stuff. Anybody else offered? Anybody else put in a resume? Anybody else signed the application form? We want to be at your right side. Jesus talking about becoming powerless so that you and I can become powerful. And they say, no, we want to be powerful right now. So that lets me know, ladies and gentlemen, that in the house of God, there's always going to be a set of brothers, sisters, somebody. They're looking for a position of power. I like what Jesus said. You know, I'm getting this by the Holy Ghost. He said, no, 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 that's, that's not for me to decide, but that's my father. Now, why is that important? Because, because your position of power, you think it's all about your proximity to the past. No, it's not. It's about what God said. It's about God's spirit. Because sometimes, listen, and I've had it happen, and sometimes the Holy Spirit says, let them have it, see, man. They gave it to them. Give them the position of power. And they rock it. Because some people don't understand. Listen now. Zechariah 4, 6 is not by might, nor by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. And so these disciples, they wanted an earthly glory while Jesus was speaking of a glorious kingdom to come, an eternal glory. Everybody wants heaven now, but they don't want heaven in eternity enough to stop sinning. Hmm? Hmm? Jesus is on his way to be a sacrifice for many. And here we have disciples who want to sit in a place of authority over many. Think about it, church. <laughs> this chapter is riddled with examples showing us blind people, and in particular, in particular, blind disciples. Point number two, personal blindness. Personal blindness. We now travel to the third city. He's been to Judea, Jerusalem. Now we're getting to the third city. And you know what? Just like I like having all my three ladders the same, so does Jesus. <laughs> we now travel to the third city of Jericho. Having dealt with the corporate blindness, Jesus now shows us an example of personal blindness. Jericho. Jericho means a place of Fragrance. In other words, <laughs> compared to, hear me, compared to Judea and Jerusalem, here we are going to see or sense something beautiful. They run into an ugly situation, but it's beautiful. Going to run into something that you will turn your, my, 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 turn your nose up and away from. Huh? Yet it's fragranced. Hmm. So therefore, that tells me that 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 because there's no, I tell you, Silas, your old Papatron remembers Silas. <laughs> Jesus is teaching us that hitherto for 
until we reach this place, 46, Judea and Jerusalem look beautiful, but they ain't beautiful to me. Because when, when the city is blind and when the disciples are blind, that's not beautiful. That doesn't smell well to God. That doesn't come up to God as a sweet-smelling savor. And so now he travels, he journeys to Jericho, a fragrance place. You think that he's going to Martha's house? No. You think he's going to Simon's house? No. No, no. He's going to deal with a smelly situation that smells good. Thank you. In other words, as I said, Compared to the first two cities, we're going to see something beautiful. The scene is very different from the other two places. Here we have a beggar. The image captured by the mind is a man in rags, a man with a dirty coat around himself, a man who was rejected, 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho, which I said, with his disciples <laughs> and a great number of people, Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the high wayside begging. Yeah. This man is doing what he was always doing. He's begging. For his infirmity has left him devoid of being able to work in any other way. We have seen, early in the chapter, we have seen working people, working disciples, and a working young man, and now we have a blind man begging. <laughs> That's why you can't look down on the lower class. Huh? That's why I'm glad that my votes, my, my team of young adults, and they said in their testimony, they're learning already, that the greatest servitude that you can give is to serve those without an attitude, who don't have the aptitude that you may have. There's something about being able to serve down. <laughs> Rather than have everybody serve to you. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, it is. Watch this. Yet in his blindness, Bartimaeus saw something the others missed. Their, their main focus, previous verses, their main focus was their selves. This blind man's focus was Jesus. So who is really blind? Hmm? <laughs> and church, we need to get this, that no matter what, you and I must focus on Jesus. No matter what we think or what we want, our focus must be on Jesus. Never become blind to the presence of Jesus. Bartimaeus, meaning son of Timaeus. Bar, Timaeus, Bar means son. Son of Timaeus. <laughs> now I thought on this. Thought on this. That Jesus now has us to see a man who was the son of his father. Mm -hmm. I want you to get it, church. Jesus did not have to say that he was the son of Timaeus. He could have simply have given his name. To me, Jesus is setting up that this blind man knew more about relationship than his very own disciples. This man knew that it was all about Jesus while they were focused on themselves and what they could get. This blind man was located just outside of the city. No doubt he was not seen as being worthy of begging inside the city gates. <laughs> I'm so glad Jesus will leave the city to come up and see about me. Hey, hey, I'm so glad, huh? That there's not, there's not like a statue of limitations about, about how far Jesus will go. <laughs> I hear the song, old song, to the utmost. Jesus said, to the utmost. Jesus said, he will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said, that was one of those, um, Bad, that was up the rem, down the rem. To the, uh, he, to, oh, they just dancing that song, I remember. You don't know what these little people are remembering. You got to put your praise on, you better open up. Ah! 
You better what? You better come into God's house, worshiping and moving uh, and, and glorifying God. Because that's what I remember. A bunch of foolish people, but they like to dance. And now I joined the ranks. Hey! As one of the chief officiants of being fool foolish for God. Huh? Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my heart cries out. My heart cries out. My heart cries out. Oh, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, God, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he picked me up. Here he comes. Oh, if he would have left me in my mess, if he would have left you in your mess, if, if he would have left you and said that you're not worthy of the city, you're not worthy of his attention, you're not worthy of his care, but he came to you. Yeah. He was outside of the city, not worthy. He was not good enough for the fragrance city. <laughs> he wasn't good enough for the fragrant city, just outside the gate. That's right here. You know, people can come into Shekinah. They, only sit, they just can't sit up here. But they can sit anywhere in the church. They're not hindered. And the messaging is, there's no limitation. You, can, you come early enough, sit wherever you want. Hmm? The, the valuable, valuable. Listen, he may be outside the gates, but he has an inside track when it comes to knowing the value of Jesus. Huh? This tells me that it is not about your physical location. No, it is about your heart. Hey, hey. And what you believe Jesus can do for you, 47. <laughs> and when he heard, you see, you see that? When, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. <laughs> when one has a deficit of one sense, usually the sharpness of another sense is heightened. The ear is designed by God in such a way <laughs> that whatever it receives, it's magnified. You got the outer ear, the inner ear, middle ear, and the inner ear. Now, I had to make sure I had these burns today, tonight, <laughs> because these burns are like the, the cochlea. Well, let me talk about it just a little bit. What happens is you got the, we can call them the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, or the malice the Incas, and the Stapes. Yes, yes. No, you think they just got famous names to have them? No, 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 no. There's purpose in the burn. Somebody say there's purpose in the burn. Mm -hmm. And you know, I believe it is. I must check my own self on this, but one of the smallest burns has the greatest significance. One of the smallest, and I have to confirm this, one of the smallest burns in the air does the greatest amount of magnification. Hmm. So as, as the sound wave enters the outer goes to the middle and the inner. <laughs> the inner ear has fluid. And watch this. See, this is going to mess somebody up right here. The fluid has to be disturbed. See, sometimes, too many times we get upset when life gets disturbing. But what I've learned to understand, I've just learned it, that God, if this is being disturbed, watch this. You want me to hear something. There is something that you're trying to tell me, and the only way that I can hear it is if there is a disturbance. So many times, you want you just quiet. No, this should be peaceful, wonderful. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. When, when God... It's going to take you from one level to another level. He disturbs you. He causes things to be magnified. 
Because then from here, of course, we hit the auditory nerve, which goes into the brain. Watch this. And then interprets all that sound as, as, as words so you can understand me. All this stuff going on. Sound waves traveling, traveling. And it's the disturbance that causes the nerves in the, in the fluid. Picks it up. Goes to the brain. Hmm? And then you understand what's being said. I will tell you, I'm going to hurt some people at this. Unless there is a disturbance, you're never going to understand what's being said. We get disturbed by the disturbance. But you've got to learn that in the midst of the disturbance, Jesus is still on board. The Prince of Peace is still on board. You're not going to get out of the boat. You're not, you're not going to drown. Just stand your ground. And so it's this magnification. So you got to, no, here's the thing. I, I can see. So my ears are not as sharp as this man's ears were. And so whatever noise was going on around him, he could hear better than the people. Now that makes all sorts of sense to me because from verses 1 to verse 45, these knuckleheads haven't been hearing nothing. I'm telling you, the last, Capitron remembers, the last. Because Jesus is strategic, you know, I just love me so. He literally shows you all these blind people. See, all oh, they can see, they can hunt the money, they can look at the family, you know, they can see the children, all blind. So that's journey. Let's now go to a blind man. Sometimes we don't appreciate what we have until we see somebody else who without what we have are grateful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so the essence is that this man's ears <laughs> were more sensitized than the rest. With the crowd talking. <laughs> Remember, Jesus like the healing, moving machine. He got a crowd following him. You know, everybody calling his name, talking. All this, all, all, all this noise going on. <laughs> hey. With the crowd talking and walking, this is what he heard. Follow me. He heard that Jesus of Nazareth was in the crowd. All of that noise, all of the sound, he hears what he needs to hear. Hello. Hello. Oh, glory to God. I'm getting this thing at a new level. Stop. Everything else should be noise. Everything else should be a song. Hear what you need to hear to get what you need to get. I can hear, hear a whole pile of talk, a whole pile of stuff, but I ain't taking everything into my spirit. It's because it's taking up room for the blessing. <laughs> blessing, blessing. Now, understand, because he said, I hear Jesus of Nazareth. There was more than one Jesus in Jerusalem. Ah, but there was only one Jesus of Nazareth. And when Jesus of Nazareth is in your vicinity, <laughs> you better know what to do. You know, it's like when the Holy Spirit's moving, Lord have mercy, at least move your little finger, do something. Don't, don't, don't have the Holy Ghost to, to touch down in Shekinah Worship Center. You're wondering, what's going on? What? What? Are you blind? Are you deaf? What's going on? Now, here's the part that's sweet in me. I mean, I know I said it about five times a minute. Here it is. <laughs> he moves from Jesus of Nazareth to, G to Jesus, thou son of David. <laughs> hey, some people haven't moved yet. Some, some people still know Jesus, he, he existed. <laughs> that, that, that Jesus, well, uh, yeah, I guess he was. But no, no, Maria, Pastor Maria Seaman, you all, we know he's more, he's more than a man of Galilee. He's, he's my savior. He's my, he's my king. He's my kinsman redeemer. He's my soon coming king. He moves from Jesus of Nazareth to Jesus, our son of David. What is this telling you and me? <laughs> the blind man can see. Okay, 
Okay. He cannot see naturally, but he sees more than those who have a natural sight. The contrast is amazing. For he recognizes the location of Jesus and then the vocation of like I feel like anointing myself and falling out. He, hear me, he recognizes the location and then the vocation. He recognizes where he's from and then he recognizes what he's been born to do. How about G- people know about Jesus, but they don't know that he has power to save. Power to heal, power to deliver, huh? Some people are getting it. I heard her. I forget who told me this story. They said, but she's lost. But no, here's the beautiful thing. They know 86. They know the location and something. Well, if they know I'm lost, that means I heard at least three words. <laughs> So all, we do, all I'm waiting for now is the magnification. Oh, my God. Get it in their ears. Why? Because one day they're going to be begging. One day they're going to be outside the city gates. One day they're going to stand in need of something. One day they're going to need a Savior. One day they're going to need a deliverer. One day they're going to need somebody. And the sound will come. Blessings abound. The sound. The sound. Sheba Katayo. That's that's why that's why you gotta lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Hmm? Ain't nobody bought about Zion at a football game, basketball game, nightclub. Nobody worrying about all that. When the saints of God begin to make a song. That's why somebody's freedom is contingent upon the song that you make. So listen, Jesus, you're more than a man from Nazareth. You are a man who has the ability to heal me. You are more than a man. You have power and authority that is above any man. This man, personally blind, and he gets personal with Jesus. First time meeting Jesus. He ain't met him yet. <laughs> he, he calls him, watch this, son of David. While he has been identified as the son of Timaeus. They're in tune with each other. Hey, I'm a son, you're a son. What? I'm a son and you're a son. We believe in relationship. And I believe that the relationship, Jesus, that you have with your father, my father loves me, you can do something for me, you see? The relationship. You can't be in church and, and negate relationship. <laughs> see that right there? relationship. This man, though blind, is making, con- making a connection with Jesus. No matter where you are and how you are, you must personally connect with Jesus. 48. <laughs> 48. <laughs> All this happening. Watch, watch this. For the professionals. He wants to live and walk and talk and eat. Hmm. And many charged him that he shall hold his peace. <laughs> well, I tell you, this is a Pentecostal blind man. But he cried the more a great deal. You know, come, and t- t- come and tell me be quiet. I give you permission. Come and tell your pastor be quiet. Yes. Be quiet, pastor. Hallelujah. Be quiet. Thank you, Jesus. Be quiet. Glory be to God. Be quiet. Oh, I love him more than you know. Yeah. See that? I'm going to wear you out. I'm going to wear you out. (laughs) I'm going to wear you out. When when you listen, 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 Linda. (laughs) 
when you know what God, what Jesus, you open your mouth and you give God praise and you thank God and you honor God and you worship God and you glorify him. <laughs> Oh, Shabbayarobosu. Glory! Mm. <laughs> but he cried <laughs> the more a great deal. No, nah, come on now. Nah. He cried the more a great deal. That's like more and more and more. More to the tenth power. <laughs> what did he cry? Thou son. No, no, no. He didn't go, help me, Jesus, here. He didn't go back to Jesus of Nazareth. Once you reach the vocation, you don't go back to the location. I'm going to help somebody. Once you reach the place where Jesus is able to deal with you and to heal you, you don't go back to where you first started. You've already graduated. He's graduated from Jesus of Nazareth to Jesus, thou son of David. But let me tell you something, church. <laughs> they tried to calm him down, but he shouted all the more. <laughs> People just gave up on me. Nobody kicks up to me on Facebook, more probably. <laughs> They wanted him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more. They wanted him to hold his peace, but too late. He knew that he was near the Prince of Peace, and he shouted all the more. Yeah, just understand. <laughs> he heard, watch this, just to add to that. I used to do that science um, experiment, too, with the S1s and S2, to, to blind them. Right, you blind the students. I'm very simple, but it's effective. You blind the students. Students stand in some in the classroom. You tell everybody moves in the classroom. Then you tell somebody, clap your hands. Clap it once. So the blinded person, they will have to point to where the sound is coming from. But, but why did I say that? Because I wanted you to understand that not only did he hear Jesus, but he knew the location. He, he knew the location. He knew the angle to go to. To find Jesus. Right? Yes, he did. Oh, man, I got so excited. You don't want me to start over. Hold on. Ow! Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You notice I'm scrolling a bit, don't you? Mm-hmm. Hold your peace. <laughs> and so, hear me, hear me, hear me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they wanted him to hold his peace, but too late he knew that the Prince of Peace was near, and he shouted all the more. Man. That's like shouting for your deliverance. There's nothing more beautiful than someone shouting for the deliverance, screaming for the deliverance. What? Hollering for the... This man knew that he was about to have his condition dealt with. Takes me to my final point for the night, point number three, physical blindness. Hmm. 49. And Jesus stood still. That's my science experience. See, oh, I like that. I like that because we see. <laughs> Once the man, the blind man, locates Jesus, Jesus stands still. Because now he knows where to come. If Jesus had kept on moving, he Shamano say, watch this, catch this. He would have went to where Jesus was and not where Jesus. You don't ever want to be where Jesus was. You want to be where Jesus mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus stood still and commanded him. Ooh. So now Jesus' voice is elevated. Commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. He calleth thee. Now, see, these disciples, I got attitude. Attitude. There's a sarcasm here in this verse. 
All right. For a copy of this sermon in its entirety, please email me at swim at logic.bm. God bless. Blessings, blessings upon you.